we have a customer that came in he brought in three 2012 macbook pro motherboards and he brought in one 2012 macbook pro that does not power on the three boards that he brought in they do power on but he said that he has a problem with the headphone jack on all three of them and he wants the headphone jacks replaced on all three boards so i told him how did you manage to break all three headphone jacks on those boards he started laughing and i did not get an answer so board number one you can tell that the headphone jack is broken inside and the same thing goes with the other two boards that he brought in what i want to do is i'm going to remove this port using low melt solder and from the donor board i'm going to attempt to remove the connector using hot air so we'll get to see the difference between using low melt solder and using hot air and also the customer brought us about i would say maybe 20 donor boards and he asked that he gets a good deal on his repairs so all those are donor boards right here for macbooks and this one alone i see one two three four five six seven boards we have a couple of boards here and we have over maybe 10 boards here maybe i'll post some of the boards for sale on our site for those who are interested but let's start with this repair and see how we're gonna remove the headphone jack connector from this board i do not know how many pins the headphone jack is honestly i never had to change one before but based on what i can tell here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten maybe it's ten pins maybe 11 12 13 i do not know i do not know uh this is plastic maybe burnt plastic maybe customer attempted to heat up the board and remove this connector because i see burnt plastic here and some signs of liquid or flux or whatever the case may be but solder joints are still intact the port has not been removed before you know maybe we can start with the donor board first i'm not going to use the customer's donor board because we have a lot of them here so let me grab one of our donor boards and maybe we can start with that we'll apply hot air to remove the port and we'll see how long it takes to remove that port using hot air and at the same time when we remove that connector the headphone jack we can tell how many legs it has i have a donor board here that i bought in 2014 <laughs> it was one of those boards that has holes in them and i have used so many parts from this board and headphone jack looks good on this one so let's remove this port or this headphone jack and we're gonna hit up from the bottom not from the top if we hit up from the top we're gonna probably end up damaging that headphone jack and i want to put something heavy on that board to to hold it like this maybe we'll do it from this side so you can see what's going on currently my hot air station is at 500 degrees celsius at max and we're gonna heat up from the bottom and even though we are at 500 degrees celsius it may take a while before solder melts because macbook boards are thick they will absorb a lot of heat solder will only liquefy when the board itself reaches melting temperature and i'm still heating up and hot air is still on 500 degrees celsius a lot of heat a lot of heat just imagine if we heat it from the top that connector would have been gone by now i still cannot desolder this connector look at this and that's where low melt solder plays a big role
seriously 500 degrees and I still cannot desolder that connector or that headphone jack. starting to get loose I cannot remove that connector. Wow. I cannot remove that connector. Finally. Wow. 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 That entire board is super hot. That entire board. It probably took around three minutes to desolder that connector. This entire board is hot. The board itself had to reach melting temperature for solder on the board to liquefy. I did not think it was going to be that difficult to remove that headphone jack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen pins. We have two big pins on the back, followed by the three pins here, three pins here, two, three, three, two, three. Let's grab the customer's board. And this time we're not going to use hot air because I do not want to apply a lot of heat onto the customer board. The board is functional and customer only wants his headphone jack replaced. So we cannot apply a lot of heat onto this board. But I did tell the customer of the risks involved when working on this board. And he understands. We're going to apply low melt solder here, here. Two, three, three, two, and three. 13 pins. And let's just watch how the magic of low melt solder is going to desolder this connector. So the first thing that we do is we apply flux because flux helps with the flow of solder. We're gonna start by applying low melt solder onto all the pins. And I can feel the pin moving. We wanna make sure not to knock off any nearby components. Apply more low melt solder onto the tip. Okay, we still have this one here. Look at that pin, how it's moving now. And we're gonna do the same thing here. More flux. 
because Flux is king, king of the jungle. And let's apply Lamel Southern here on the big legs. And Lomel Southern here. Let's go back to this camera. Right now, in order to remove the connector, we're gonna have to apply heat, but much less heat, and we're gonna remove it a lot quicker. Let's see. Talk is cheap, let's do it. We want action, not talk. Okay, so we're gonna apply heat on the bottom here. That's bottom of the board. And the port is out. The port is out. <laughs> it took almost three minutes to remove that port or that connector using just hot air. It took us about 10 seconds to remove that connector using low melt solder. How nice is that? How nice is low melt solder? That's why I keep saying over and over and over and over that low melt solder is magic. So this is the bad port. We're gonna get rid of this. We need to clean solder from here. Look at that beautiful image. And if you have not already ordered a microscope from us or a ring light, we are running low. We have few of them left in stock and the next shipment will be in probably two, three weeks. This week we had an overwhelming number of orders on ring lights and microscopes after I did that review on the quality of the ring light that we got in. It's amazing. Apply flux. And all the stuff I'm using here you can find on our site, Lomelt Solder Flux. We are direct vendors of Amtec Flux. We buy directly from Amtec and we sell to the public. And we sell as a wholesale for those interested in buying in quantities. We already have a quantity discount on our site. And we're gonna wake off those holes. And look at the way the wick absorbs solder. Nice and thick wick. And of course we have to make sure not to knock off any neighboring components. Let me get rid of the glare. And probably we still have one more to the solder. And anything else. And all looks good to me. Just like that. Just like that. Flux, flux, flux. Flux is your friend, always.
And look at those nice solder blobs. Okay, so we are done. I did not realize the microscope camera was not on, but we just quickly went over those pins. And look at that job, backlight factory. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. The job would have been quicker if we had those headphone jacks in stock as brand new. Look at that job, beautiful, beautiful. So the board is done. We just soldered this headphone jack right here, right there, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video.